I checked the date. I'm looking at the calendar. Thursday, the oh, it's Wednesday. See, yeah, Wednesday the 21st. <clears throat> but I know I'm not the only one. If if not, if you're not working, and I know I'm not the only one who's getting days mixed up. Hello. So um, I'll just um, talk for a minute here. Um, it's just kind of um, daily um, interesting, you know, watching events of the world while sheltering in place at home. Uh, I want to share here in Nebraska, partially because we're a red state. COVID is just continually rising. Our numbers are continually rising. Our hospitals are reaching capacity and it's being finally being discussed by the local Republican um, politicians because they're, they're, they're Trump butt sniffers. You know, whatever he says is reality. And as a result, they've thrown the whole state under the bus like so many. If you're new to my channel, you know, and you're just here to, to hear about music, um, you can go away because I'm, I'm here living my life. This, I'm at home so I'm talking about what's on my mind, you know. If you don't have time for it, that's quite all right, okay? So, I'm just, you know, really sitting tight. Um, with that, with to talk about music related to that, someone a, when asked me what's happening with the new band, the David Nance band. Well, what can happen? Nothing. And the other thing is, <clears throat> it wasn't a formal like we're a band band now. <clears throat> it's like I like the way David operates. David Nance is really anti-authority, anti. He's anti. You know, kind of anarchist, kind of an anarchist, which I can appreciate to a point. And so I'm like the, I'm the guy. It's like they finally hooked up with a good bass player. So, you know, when there's something to do, he'll call me. But the idea of regular rehearsals and stuff like that, no. <clears throat> His new record, which I'm not on, they recorded it um, before, you know, I would have been on it if I'd been hanging out, but I don't hang out. And that's one thing about David and a lot of the people that I know that I like, they all like to hang out, you know, and drink and stuff, and I don't. And if I was doing that, I would have been on this new album, which comes out in November. But because of the COVID, everything's up in the air, you know, whether or not he can even... No one can, you know, he can't talk, think about touring to promote the album. I'm, I, you know, so that's where that's at. Everything's compromised by our, um, we're just failing at, at, um, managing this, this pandemic. We're failing. So music, Arthur over in England, I'm starting to think, Arthur, do you have a connection to Joe Boyd? You have some connections. You send me some very interesting historical stuff. This is the latest thing I received from Arthur. Dudu Pukwana, or is it Dudu Pukwana and the Spe Spears? A new release of archival recordings. The one, the first album came out. It's a double album. Came out in 1968, and, and the. The second album are Studio Outtakes. This is very interesting. Historical. The story is here. Thank you very much for sharing. This is very historical stuff. Dudu Pakwana came to my attention first through Chris McGregor's Brotherhood of Breath. But this tells a story about how they ended up in England. All the hard work that they did as he did in dance bands and the other African musicians who stayed, who became um, mainstays of English music. You know, when I look at the, the um, 
not just Dudu Pakwana. I mean, he's played with everyone. But Remy Kabaka, right there, you should know that name. And Remy Kabaka on drums and percussion, he's played with everyone. You know, when I looked up his CV, he's literally played with everyone in all aspects of, of music. And so this, this is, um, um, the first part of the album is dance music for um, rich people. And as it goes on, we get more into the authentic sound. Uh, I forget what they call this music. It's in here. But I love it. And then the other thing that's very interesting about this is Joe Boyd, who was the person behind getting things happening here, had the money, had the ears. He's got um, these guys hooked up with members of Fairport Convention. Richard Thompson plays guitar on here. But all these, all these wonderful, famous, to me famous names of English jazz and rock are involved in this music. And, um, wow, that, wow, this is, t this is tight. Again, um, <clears throat> it has a real historical value. Um, it's wonderful to listen to as well, though. Dudu Pakwana and the Spears. Thank you so much for sending that to me. Um, I'll do one more, keep it short. Haven't listened to the Smiths in a while. And um, this is one of my favorite singles by them. Not for the This Charming Man, but for the two B-sides, Accept Yourself and Wonderful Woman. Great songs. I was looking this up because I, since I have the time to get nerdy about records, I looked up to see which edition this is. This is an early edition with the mock Capitol Records Rough Trade logo that it turns out that Morrissey disapproved of and they had to change it. So I have an early pressing of this, which I thought I did because I was one of the first people in Omaha to know about the Smiths and turned everybody else onto them. So I'd buy the stuff as soon as I could get it in Omaha, which isn't always first run. Last thing I'll say, because like I said, it's my channel. At this point, I am just really, really bewildered how anyone with a good heart and an open mind could vote for Trump for four more years of this of decay and he's at the helm of it his leader his lack of leadership and focus on running the actually running the com country there's i just say you know, you know you're just blindly not looking at that when you say you're still going to support him the only he, he represents to me, a false reality that used to, that still exists for white people only or people with money. That's why it's not make America great again because it's not, it's very obviously very divisive and it's very obvious who he favors, you know, and that's, the deal is, it's, just say it and then I'll go. How unfortunate to be so short-sighted because of what you have and what you own that you can't see that you'll go down along with everybody else eventually because you need we need each other and all the brown and black people who are dying because of covid and who's are being thrown out into the street because of the econ economic um disaster there's no full escape for these evil that's what it looks like to me it looks like you know you get to a certain point and it's like well all I can see is making sure that I have that money and I retain my position and if all you people die or suffer well that's the consequence but uh, I must maintain this base the system must survive seems to be part of the thinking going on Sure seems pretty uh, heartless and inhuman to me. Thank goodness for music. Let me know how you're doing.